Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to do a capacity check to see how long these four 12 volt 100 amp hour batteries from Watt Cycle can run a 1300 watt load through a 2000 watt inverter from Jupiter. If you haven't already done so, check out the previous video where I showed you how to put all four batteries into the same state of charge. We end up at 13.61 volts at 400 amp hours. And if you do the math, that equates to 5,444 watt hours. We're going to start out by putting these batteries back into a parallel configuration for this capacity check. And with this last negative being hooked up to the last negative on this battery right here, we are back into a parallel configuration. Unlike the balancing video, I am actually going to tighten down these lugs more appropriately because we will be drawing down a lot more amperage during this capacity check. Once I have a permanent setup, I will tighten down the lugs appropriately. Right now, a hand tightened lug with a screwdriver until I couldn't turn the screwdriver anymore. It's pretty significant, but I will do it more appropriately, more properly once this is in a more permanent state of readiness. That will also include the use of a more proper way of hooking stuff up by use of these uh, bus connections. I have the reds and I have the blacks for the bus. Which will also include the use of a 100 amp fuse. Again, that's going to be deployed more permanently as well as an actual cutoff switch for the battery itself. All that would be coming out in a future video for a future build. Make sure to check out that video when it comes out. But for this demonstration, I'm going to use the connection directly from the inverter into the batteries now. There's been a lot of videos out here on YouTube on where's the best place to draw from your battery bank because a lot of people, there's been plenty of video out here where people have drawn directly from the far end of one of the bank or another. Like for example, if these were laid out in front of you from left to right, the, they would connect the uh, inverter to the far left battery which will work. The only problem is the far left battery will drain faster than the far right battery. And there's also videos out here where people have taken the connections with the positive on the far left battery and the negatives on the far right battery. And there's even another way where, you know, someone had some craziness when it came to how the wire, how the batteries were all interconnected. They were still in parallel, but the way they were interconnected allowed the, uh, allowed the batteries to drain more evenly across the load. So all sorts of way of doing this, but, be, but for this demonstration and for ease of this demonstration, we are going to hook up this inverter directly to the negative in here, to negative here, to positive here, to positive here. So we're going to hook up the, the two aught cable to the battery bank at this time. And just like before, when I did my, uh, capacity test with just one battery. When I hook up the battery bank to the inverter, there will be a spark that is to be expected because I don't have the proper resistor to allow me to do the proper connections without causing a spark. I need the longer screws. It helps to have the longer screws. 
And as previously mentioned, you gotta have the longer screws in order to connect multiple cables to get that. And as I said, there will be a spark. That's to be expected. And with that, we are set up, ready to go. The inverter shows system normal, that's good. And the DC input load, well, the DC input voltage load showing five out of five bars. Again, that's 13.6 volts at 400 amp hours. And again, that equates to 5,444 watt hours. All right, and then I have the inverter set up, which is a 1300 watt space heater. We'll do the capacity check. I have my good old fancy watt meter so we can see the actual values going uh, coming out. The inverter currently is showing 116.9, 117 volts. Power into the uh, space heater. Again, 117 volts going out of the inverter going into the space heater right now. And as you can see, we are drawing currently 1,300. And it was a little bit higher, it's coming back down. It will eventually even out at 1,315 watts. And if you look there on the inverter, you see that it is basically at a 50%, a little bit over 50% of its capability is being used on this one single device. So now we are going to let it bake to see how long this 5,444 watt hour system can run a 1300 watt space heater. In theory, when you do the math, 1,300 watts divided into 5,444 watts equates to for four hours and 15 minutes. So, we're gonna let it bake. Check back with you on the, on, the, on the hour for every hour until she shuts down. One hour into it on this capacity check. As you can see, the space heater is still chugging along here. Again, one hour into this test, we have consumed 1.27 kilowatt hours out of this 5,444 uh, battery bank back here. We are still humming along at 11.41 amps. A little bit under 1300 watts now that everything has stabilized. A little bit under 1300 watts. And the voltage coming off the AC side is still at running around 113.9, 114 volts. So I'm moving right along. Going into hour number two. And as you can see here, system is still normal. The battery input level has went down from five to four, but it has stayed at that level since basically the beginning of the first hour. And then the DC to input, AC output level is still running about 
66%. That's basically four out of six. Do the math, that's two thirds. That's basically 66% of the capacity of this inverter is being consumed by this space heater, which is keeping me nice and toasty warm down here in the studio. So I'm not complaining. The inverter has been running, the fan has been running pretty much nonstop since we started this test. I have checked the temperatures of those wires just by hand touching and they're just barely, barely lukewarm. I did take an opportunity to see, I think how I have this configured up, wired out currently. The load is at the bottom of this diagram there, my, my pretty artwork there. But as you can see, the, uh, the load goes directly to, uh, goes to the battery terminal number one on the uh, positive, or now on the negative side, it goes off the of battery terminal number one on the positive side or negative side. And the battery goes directly into, or the uh, load goes directly into battery number four on the positive side. So this is basically the first point in contact on the positive side. And this is basically the first point of contact on the negative side. Now, we know that the voltage is the same across a parallel series or a parallel setup. We realize that, but there is plenty of videos out here indicating that depending on how you have this wired in, you may draw more from one battery than another. So I'm not sure exactly. I'm, I'm going to take the assumption that battery number four is getting drawn out the most because it's the closest to the load. But then I have the negative side going directly to battery number one on the top right hand side of this diagram. So I'm not sure exactly how the batteries are being hold efficiently I do not know I don't have an amp meter that can read DC voltage or a shunt or anything like that I guess that'll be something for a future need but for now just for testing purposes this is where we're at in regards to how long this 55 or 54 5444 watt hour battery bank 12 hour uh, 12 volt battery bank how long it can run this uh, 1300 watt space heater through this 2000 watt inverter hour number two counting down at this time all right two hours into it off of this 1300 watt space heater we have consumed 2580 watt hours so about half the draw of this uh, battery bank. We're about halfway through on the battery bank capa uh, capacity. So a little bit over two hours now. The voltage is still running right about 113.8 to 114 volts. That's good, hasn't changed, hasn't decreased any yet. Still drawing about the same amperage as before. And our wattage is also right about where it was before, a little bit under 1300. So got a little bit more, not as demanding as before, but still, it's not that, <laughs> not that much of a difference. So 2.6 kilowatt hours at this time after two hours and two minutes. The inverter itself still sitting at normal. The DC input level is still at four or five bars, so it hasn't really dropped in capacity as of yet. And the DC, the AC output level, the wattage demand is still at 66% or four out of six bars. So still looking good, two hours into it. Hour number three, coming up. Okay, three hours into it, ladies and gentlemen, and the inverters and the batteries are still going nice and strong. I'm not feeling any tremendous heat coming off of the battery cables at all. They're a little warm, but nothing significant, nothing of any concern. 
we have consumed 3.86 kilowatt hours or 3,860 kilowatt hours in the last three hours, well, three hours and one minute now. The voltage has came down just a little bit, half a vote since the last time we checked. So it's starting to, starting to come down a little bit. Wattage is still pumping in a little bit under 1300 watts, 1287 in this case. And the amperage is holding a little bit less than it was earlier, 11.36 amps. I, I believe the last time was like 11.49 amps, something like that. So we are starting to see a little bit of a draw, a draw down on the AC coming out of this inverter, but I'm not concerned about this, these numbers at this time. But here we are going into our number three. And as you can see the inverter itself, we're still at four out of five bars on the DC input level. So the inverter doesn't see any tremendous drop yet. Not enough to turn off that fourth light off to the right. And the load, the DC to AC output, also known as the load, in my opinion, is still cooking away at 66% or four out of six, or four out of seven, I should say, four out of seven bars. Hour number three. Here we go. Hour number four has arrived, ladies and gentlemen. And as you can see, the inverter is almost out of power. We're down to one light on the DC input level. One out of five lights there. And of course the light is red, indicating that we're almost out of juice. In fact, there's the alarm right there. I had to do a voiceover on this part of the video because I forgot to turn on the microphone during the actual living live stream or the actual recording of this video. So as you can see, it just we just now now got into the hour number four and we are in the alarm mode. Uh, we have consumed 5,120 amp hours in four hours. So that's where we're at there off of this uh, 5,444 watt hour battery bank drawn down a 1,300 watt space heater through a 2,000 watt inverter. And looks like the uh, space here has shut down. So the inverter has finished running the space here. And also the kilowatt meter is also dark as well, which means the inverter has turned off its output to the AC side of things. I'll go ahead and turn off that inverter because that alarm, with, you know, although you can't hear it, is very loud but it is there. I turn off that alarm. So we can wrap up this video. So 5,444 watt hours. I ran that 1300 watt space here for exactly four hours. And that's what you can do with four 12 volt 100 amp hour batteries from Watt Cycle, a 2000 watt inverter from Jupiter and of course, you saw how much we can pull down on it using that 1300 watt space heater. So that's how you can do what you need to do in order to protect yourself and your family during a power outage should you need it. One of many ways to be uh, stacking your preparedness for whatever life throws at you. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you on the next video.